now you are MBA students, the next generation leaders. Basically, we are here in the hub where the next generation is prepared for the economics of mutuality. Why do you feel passionate about this? Maren, let's start with you. Um, I think economics of mutuality is completely going to change business. It's going to change business from being really short-term focused to being much more long-term focused. Hopefully we'll move away from just thinking about financial goals. Hopefully we'll see a culture change. I think there's a lot of stuff that's really going to change. We're going to move away from being so divergent between what society is doing and what business is doing and hopefully come a lot more closer together again. So I think there's a lot of change coming up. So talking about that mutuality and what it means for business is really important. Interesting because business in Europe is different to business in America or business in Asia. Jan, how, how would you actually see that? I think right now, because of development China has uh, done in the last 30 years, now we can afford this mutuality. Because mutuality definitely means some uh, a little bit burden for their companies. It's their choice. But I, th I think Chinese companies now, they can afford to make the choice because um, you can see uh, wealth is superfluous in Chinese context. And uh, personally, uh, I, I really, because I also work in a bank, and I think for the investors who make the wise decision, and uh, it's very important to, to have this mutuality in their mind. Now, in terms of uh, having that as a concept, and moving a concept from academia to real application, how difficult is it? You both worked in banks, you both were out there in the real world, then you came back to academia, you're prepared to go back. Um, how difficult really is it putting it uh, into practice? Jan? I can say um, it's, very, it's more difficult in China than in the Western world. You can check the website of big companies, of Chinese big companies and Western big companies, ESG, sustainability development for Western companies is a very big issue, it's a very big concern. They uh, put a lot of efforts in it, they care about the community, care about the environment. But in Chinese context, if you checked their website, you barely can find nothing about the environment, about the community, about sustainability. And the awareness of the public and the company and the leaders, it's definitely need to be paid, need to be given more effort. And uh, that's why I think I want my voice heard mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Maun, would you, would you agree that it's easier for uh, non-Asian companies or Anglo-Saxon companies? I think there's definitely been an evolution over the last sort of 30 years or so. It's definitely, business is definitely changing how it's looking at responsibility. Um, I think we're getting there, we're talking about it. Events like this one clearly show that we're thinking about mutuality and how business needs to change, but there's still a few barriers, and I spoke about that earlier today. For me, that's middle management and measurement primarily. We still have a culture that doesn't really allow for us to really achieve mutuality, and we're still not really measuring it properly. We're still not measuring social impact in the same way we're measuring financial impact, and we're certainly not integrating the two. So. As Jan was saying, it's, it might be easier in the West. We're starting to think about it, but I don't think we're quite there yet. But I think it was so interesting to hear the entire debate about metrics, when it seems that even mutuality as a concept is hard to define. So you don't know what you're defining, really, or it's really soft and hard and philosophical, or spiritual almost, and then you want to measure it. And this is exactly where you know the concrete financial world, which is easy to measure, meets the soft non-financial capital and also bottom lines in that sense. How difficult do you think this, this emergence of these concepts is going to be? I think some, some things are easy to measure. So you've got certain direct social impacts that you, where you can just tick that box and say, yep, we've helped this many people and we've spoken to this many people. And then other things are much more, like you said, much more indirect. So um, we heard from Dell today, they were talking about how you can measure how much cost you're saving for a customer when you're producing a more sustainably produced laptop, for example, but can you measure 
what impact that has on education and what impact it has on healthcare uh, and how quickly you can screen people for things. So I think that kind of stuff is going to be really, really difficult to measure and I'm not entirely sure how we're going to go about that, but I think there's certain things that where we can make a start and we need to just start on that journey not be afraid of doing it just because we know it's going to get more difficult further down the line. Mm. So Jan, do you think the responsibility actually lies with you as a future leader, as an individual, lies with the private sector? or the public sector, the government. I mean, there's a lot of government involvement still in China in how the society works or doesn't work. I think mutuality itself, it means that it lies in everyone. It's everyone's responsibility because it takes the effort of the whole society, of the whole country to make the change, even the whole world. The uh, cooperation of the intergovernmental cooperation. And of course, the government can do a lot of things. However, it's still limited because uh, they are restricted by their own mission um, for the development, for the welfare of, the, of their citizens. But NGOs, sometimes they can also work uh, very well. However, um, it also depends on the context. And some people also say NGO is just extension of government. And uh, for the private companies, um, of course, uh, if they can they can be the one, who, they are the key in this uh, formula. If they can really put the, in their efforts, uh, the change will be uh, exponentially uh, bigger. And uh, mm, also the public, the awareness of the public. I think in China uh, it's much better uh, when the education level is higher, but still in the, in the village, um, it, people are not uh, trying and uh, not getting warm food and uh, getting warm clothes, how they can think of uh, the environment. So it's basically luxury. Mutuality at some point is a, is a lux luxury to, to consider if you still have to look after your food, your shelter, your basic security, your basic needs. So it is something that has to have a certain evolutionary background in order to implement it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.